naive, silly question. Mm -hmm. Why? I do understand what you say, that it is uh, sexually um, suggestive or, or yeah. ar even arousing. Why can't they touch each other? Why does everybody have to dance by themselves? Well, that's Why not how they? I dance. No? <laughs> um, <laughs> but the rock and rollers, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I think a lot of it is because it is uh, uh, the rhythms. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a driving force. And uh, the rhythms manifest themselves in the gyrations and the, and the maneuvers that you do Without through the dancing. Touching? But I think what that does is that just arouses the passions that much more. And once the music does stop, then the scene is set, so to speak. Uh -huh. So what you are saying is that it's a little bit, hey, I've never said that before. But what you are saying, Ted, is that it's really a little like foreplay. Absolutely, it's, it is foreplay. OK, I hope you talk about contraceptive, uh, uh, contraceptives. I if think I are... mentioned it once. I don't recall. But I, I think that's <laughs> the individual's responsibility. But it should, certainly should be brought you up. Could mention it a few times. Say, yeah. I was with Dr. Ruth Westheimer. She I'll said, you, if you are sexually active, use it. Ted, I want to talk about one aspect that you know about and I do not. Um, I know that in the whole uh, show business that you are in, that there's a lot of drugs. Yes. And it's bet, very yeah. sad. And I do understand that you have never touched it. No, I'm, I'm kind of lucky. I, How did I've, you manage? I, I guess I was just too big of a smart guy. I mean, uh, I was always fighting anything that interfered with my music. Mm -hmm. And I could see the musicians. And you got to realize that I was playing professionally in 1958. There wasn't even any hippies yet. It was still beatniks back then. Right. And uh, people would offer me, I was very young, and people would offer me drugs, and they'd have that wounded look, you know? And I'd go, well, I don't want that wounded look. I mean, they would fumble a bit on their instruments, and mm -hmm. I was real involved with my music. I really wanted to play that guitar and make those sounds and make that rhythm. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to have your your capacities finely tuned mm -hmm. and your capabilities at optimum working level. And you realized even then... I realized that immediately they... that that would fog your senses. Mm -hmm. I, I've never done any drugs. I've never drank. Uh, were they angry and I've never at even you? Did they ostracize you because you were not uh, going along with I was. I was basically a reject from the rock and roll community, but I kind of relished that because I... I thought I was playing good music, and I, I was one of the early success stories out of Detroit. And I, uh, uh, you know, I, everybody's got to choose their own path, but I'm very proud of the path I choose. I'm, I'm happy with that yeah, for you, too. Yeah, I uh, Ted, let me ask you, do your children know where you stand on the issue of drugs? Oh, absolutely, because I'm very adamant about it. I mean, mm -hmm. I won't allow it in my organization in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I've been known to get physically responsive to people who bring it into my organization. Mm -hmm. I basically say no once. And, the then, next time. and then I just beat them to the earth. And, uh, and I, I guess really they know that. I guess they know that. Yeah, so I they really don't... hate it. So okay. uh, my kids see that. And uh, our family had a pretty serious uh, trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, my children's mother died in 1982. And uh, they saw what can happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's as hard a lesson as any child could ever see. And when they go on the road with me, they see people having a great time. And the people that are having the greatest time are the usually ones the ones that are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to rock. And the ones that think they're having a good time, but they're stumbling around like a three-legged puppy dog, those are the ones that are whooped. And they're all stoned. And we just, get out of here. You'll drag <laughs> them out in the alley. You know, so uh, my kids see the reality of it all. That's great. Yeah, it is. Ted, um, recently you start in uh, Miami Vice. Yeah. Is that a new Yeah, well, you, you know, <clears throat> I've always, I've always been intrigued by the uh, possibility of acting, and I've been pursuing it the last few years, you know, uh, scrutinizing scripts and whatnot that have been offered to me. Miami Vice was a good opportunity to really sink my teeth into a meaty role. Do you like it? Uh, I did. I had a lot of fun, and I got a lot of good reaction from it. I think you it. should make a movie of a rock star. I'm very serious. Tell them. Of a rock star who does not need all of these drugs and who is raising two children. I'm really very impressed. You know what else I wish you? Tell me. I wish a nice woman in your life. Yeah, well, I got one. I got the nicest woman in my life. <laughs> but uh, say hello to your children. Thank you, Arlene. And thank you very, very much. It's my for pleasure, visiting. dear. I'll thank bring you. you out on the road sometime. Stay where you are. Dr. Ruth will be right back to take more of your calls right after these messages. Got the holiday at the Louisiana Hayride. It's all Presley's magic translated to celluloid, where the legendary performer starred in 33 movies. The Elvis 
legend has turned into a genuine phenomenon. Satirized by pop singer Mojo Nixon, and Elvis is everywhere. Man, 